This is the process. My name is Dr. John Bush. This is lesson 141. It's a case study on wide receivers using my median consistency data. We're in the beta testing year. Okay. I uh, started off lesson 128. So go back to there and catch up. I've covered the quarterbacks, uh, running backs, tight ends, and now this is the wide receivers. So if you've seen those, uh, this is you pretty much know how this is going to roll here. So we have position, year, player. The average of the counts over median here uh, for the 2021 season. So those were weeks over median were the using fantasy points as the metric to measure per game so the percentage and then an ADP number it's a couple weeks old but you know it's pretty close to probably where things are right now but certainly check on that uh, so I uh, sorted by ADP and you can look and cross and find the uh, the uh, consistency percentage there. Somebody like Cooper Cup at 776.5, so almost between seven and eight weeks out of 10, he was above the median for wide receivers. I believe that's 16, 16 points. So that is just fantastic. If you look, uh, you're going to have a hard time finding anything else other than Justin Jefferson at 58.8, so 59. That's about six uh, weeks over 10 out of 10 that were he was above consistency. Uh, so those guys are pretty much, as you would predict, the one, two. Now, it starts getting a little interesting here at Chase and Diggs at 35%, Debo Samuel at 44, and Lamb at 40, I'm sorry, Tyreek Hill at 47, Lamb at 44, and then A.G. Brown is at 15, Keenan Allen at 50, Evans at 44 as well. So if you look by consistency, Keenan Allen uh, would be the, th you know, the third or fourth. Uh, if you look at Godwin, he was in there as well. So right away, I think you're seeing what I'm seeing, that uh, the ADPs uh, are certainly not uh, baking in the consistency numbers from last year. They may be anticipating, and we can debate about anticipation. It's pretty much when you're going outside of what's happened before, right? You're guessing, you're hoping, you're wishing, and that gets a little squishy there. It's kind of like being in a open field and you know there's a mine or two there, but you don't know where they're at. That's that's kind of the uncertainty level here in going beyond what's been done. And of course the opposite is, you know, you wait uh, after the fact and you, you know, didn't get uh, as good a bargain because you waited too late. So there's this fine, fine tuning that all drafters have to deal with, I think, is balancing the anticipation uh, of what they should do, can do, will do in 2022 versus what they've done previously. So I like to at least understand where they have, have done previously, and I think that at least you have a foundation to consider the uh, expectations a little bit. But I think there's some key bargains here using this. And, uh, you know, I think uh, it's all going to be good.
good for us if we, uh, you know, use these metrics to kind of lead us towards some uh, potentially good players here that are maybe underpriced, right? That's the whole aspect of drafting is you're trying to draft overlays, players that are cheaper than they should be versus underlays, which are too expensive versus where they should be. So it's the overlay underlay conundrum. That's, if you're a gambler, you understand that. Okay, and that's why there's no professional roulette we, uh, players or dice players because the casino knows the odds and set them such that over the long haul they will win. So there is no, you know, tricky methods to beat the odds uh, long term, right? Anybody could get lucky, you know take their bankroll and drop it on red red or black and hit and walk out the door, that casino knows that people don't do that. They want to, you know, keep going and then the, the percentages grind you down. This is just another uh, level here, some deeper down in the ADPs. And you see how far we can go down. And again, you're looking for players like Sterling Shepard, 270 <coughs> ADP, Antonio Brown, 258. <coughs> Both of those were at 43% consistency. That late is pretty damn good. Bourne and Osborne, pretty good at 24%. Just look around and these areas, you can see uh, what stands out. Even somebody like Manuel Sanders at 14%, that far down catches your attention. So definitely use these to, to uh, you know, make some deep plays as well. I've got a written article with this, and it's up on the Science of Fantasy Football uh dot com website that will go with the movie so you can kind of combine them both there so the next block of material i wanted to focus on the adp versus consistency and those numbers are not on the same scale or level so i did a normalization or scaling and what happens is I put uh, the metrics on a 100-point scale, and that allows me to subtract between consistency and ADP and get a difference, DIF number. Anything positive means that the player is an overlay. Anything negative is an underlay. And I stained yellow is... Uh, uh, very much an underlay, low, low, and purple is very much an overlay. And I'm looking across at, at players there, and I, Cup and Jefferson are so wacky outside everybody else that I tried to at least acknowledge that, but put it in above the scale because uh normal distribution really doesn't exist in in fantasy football metrics there's a it's a skewed distribution early and then kind of levels out late i think it's like logarithmic or something i forgot the transformation to make it uh linear but it's not linear by any means and so then I have the player, and is it an overlay or underlay? Underlay is what you're avoiding. Overlay is what you're moving to. And I consider Cup and Jefferson to be overlays, even at their current ADP, because they're just off off scale. Keenan Allen, Godwin, Brandon Cooks. There you go. Not many. Isn't that interesting? One would think, wow, there's a lot of bargains. No, not as many as you would think if you use this. So there, there are 
aspects of consistency that are tied in to people's uh, opinions, right? I don't know if they're looking, you know, specifically at consistency levels, but that is playing in because you see so many underlays there. We'll go to the next page. Uh, Adams is an overlay. Winthrow, uh, Thielen, Hopkins is an overlay as well. Uh, and let's see who else. Davis, Jones, Bourne, Osborne, Callaway, uh, Green, and Antonio Brown are overlays. Cobb, Shepard, Wilson and Shepard is really jumps out. It's like, wow, look at that consistency at 85 normalized. That is kick butt. Samuels and Beasley, I don't even know if he's even playing anymore, but if he ends up somewhere, he could be surprising here. Khalif Raymond also and Josh Reynolds way deep. So I would look at the diff numbers a little bit. I think that gives you the intensity level of the overlay, right? And to me, Shepard is just sitting out there like a plum. And I'm drafted him at wide receiver seven or eight in some of my deep bench leagues. And that is just, to me, it's all gravy there. Okay, the next is I wanted to look at fantasy points compared to consistency. So we have the number uh, from high to low uh, is the cons uh, fantasy points, the player, the team, the games, the target numbers. You can look at the number of targets and the fantasy points. And you can see that Cup was just off scale there. Adams, uh, Debo, Jefferson, and Chase are all above 300 fantasy points there. Notice that Chase and Samuel, though, had low targets compared to Hill, Diggs, Deontay. So just realize that fantasy points do measure touchdowns, and sometimes that can be a little funky, a little skewy there. And then there's fantasy points per game, and then there's my normalized consistency in the yellow column. And so to make a shorthand, I can characterize consistency as a type. It's called type C. So is it H for high? Uh, AA is above average, BA is below average, and LW is, is low. So, and then I looked at the end of the season fantasy points, high, above average, uh, below average and low as well. So you can then look across at the player, say, you know, Chase, Chase is high in fantasy points, but look at his consistency. Compare him and Hill. Hill was very high, weekly consistency. Jamar Chase was just above average. Look at somebody like DJ Moore down there below average. Okay, Ama St. Brown below average, Higgins below average. So there are some uh, uh, potholes in the road there, in the road, and people are just kind of looking at fantasy points and they're going to miss this southern. That's the whole point of consistency. It's adding that extra layer of information that you can. Uh, you know, fine tune and get a, a handle on uh, the players there and how well they did in a weekly game, weekly games. Fantasy point, uh, fantasy football is a weekly, okay? We don't, unless you're in a, a points only league, which there are some people who play those, then that may be different then. But uh, right now we're head to head, week to week, so it's, usually best to look at high consistency players that will deliver most weeks. At least that's the concept. And you just see here somebody like Thielen sitting there at high, Andre Hopkins at high, and then some of those like Gage is above average. Uh, 
Devona Smith above average, Christian Kirk above average, right? Uh, Elijah Moore above average, Robert Woods above average. So those kind of stick out in this next wave uh, block of players here. So these are going to be your wide receivers, five, six, and sevens, maybe fours. So you can, there's some players that I'm looking to grab and I'm, I'm, I'm liking these consistencies allow me to break some ties here. Brown just sits out there at high, and then here we're looking at, you know, below average versus low, so you got some aspects. People talk about Gabriel Davis. I understand what you think you're going to see, but last year we did not see what you think you're going to see this year. So, uh, I don't know. Okay, I probably am a little too conservative, and I may miss out on him. Not sure I'm drafting him a lot. Uh, but anyway, that is what it is. And then here's some more. Shark looks good, and there's Shepard. They really jump out to me here. Those are almost free squares. Okay, now let's turn back to a case study. I'm going to compare three wide receivers that uh, return 239. 237, 236, end of season fantasy points, EOS. Uh, targets were kind of different though. So Lockett returned more points than Moore and Pittman with less targets. Isn't that interesting? So, uh, and it has fantasy points per game. Lockett did pretty good there. So then I had a look at the normalized consistency and then the type. So Pittman, of these three, they're almost the same. There are some differences in targets and whatnot, but consistency, Pittman is highest, then Lockett, and Moore is the lowest. So consistency would, would select Pittman over Lockett over Moore, at least just looking at that. So we're going to get a little deeper into that and see what we see here. So uh, here on the left is the week 1 to 18, Tyler Lockett, fantasy points, Moore and Pittman, fantasy points, and green is very high and red is very low. And then the right-hand side, I uh, subtracted, uh, I think it's, was it 16.5? Was that what the median is? I, I, this term median in lesson 128, I think it was from 2017 to 21. So I got uh, fantasy points that most wide receivers, the median level was 16 and a half. So I subtracted that from their weekly scores and got a number. And that number is over here. And if it was above four, I uh, highlighted it in bright green. I consider that a great game. So Lockett gave us one, two, week eight, week 14, week 18 were all great games. And he gave us in dull green an okay game uh, a little bit above. So we're talking what, six games above median there in 2020. So that means 13, he was not doing well. In fact, he was pretty uh, pretty much below. So he was kind of uh, a feast or famine, and he's had that style. Uh, let's call it a best ball style player for quite some time. Look at Moore. Moore only had uh, three games. I made a mistake minus... Uh, seven that should be not any kind of green that's just a typo so three games and that's it so he hit week two three and four and disappeared for so if you drafted him uh you were sad from about week five on there was nothing happening for him Pittman, on the other hand gave us three games that were very high so less than Lockett, but what he did and why people are supporting him 
is look at the dull green numbers. Okay, so he, he delivered five games uh, that were above median plus three that were uh, great. So that's eight games. So roughly uh, uh, almost half his season was above median. That's why he gets the nod for consistency over Lockett and both of those definitely over more, even though they return the same number of value. What that means is that more was stayed below the median a lot, but not too low because he ended up with the same points as Lockett and Pittman. They were a lot more skewed that way. And if you look and you actually uh, do a scattergram of the uh, play, players there, you can see Lockett here at his nice games above. Look at that. He had five games above here and Moore had one and Pittman had one. So Lockett returned great games here. So probably in daily fantasy sports. Boy, if you had him, you really enjoy, enjoyed over uh, those, you know, if you were able to have him over the week. Here's more of the, his two games, and he hit median right there. And that was it. So Moore showed up early and then died on us. And then here is Pittman in red, and he stayed pretty close to the median, a lot of it. But boy, when he was bad, he was really bad, just like Lockett. So a little bit skewy on his bad weeks there. So if we use uh, polynomial trend lines and we look at zero across the weeks, here's Lockett was doing good, kind of came back mid died again and came back on late so he kind of uh, he's the roller coaster player look at him he's here he's gone he's back he's gone he's back somebody like Moore hit high early and then really never returned maybe towards the end he got close but he was sad from about five six on and um, uh, uh, Pittman was really nice too through about eight, nine, maybe 10, but then he kind of disappeared and started coming back late the last couple of weeks. So he did have some in deep, look how deep he was there. I mean, if you look at the, you know, if you just look at games 12, Lockett probably had the best pattern because he was delivering a lot more than Moore and uh, Pittman there. So I think we can conclude that Moore is not who we're looking for unless he just becomes a screaming value of probably about two rounds later than his ADP. I'm, I, I do like Pittman. He seemed to have... Uh, you know, eight nice games above median. Lockett could, you know, he's somebody that I would draft below his ADP, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't turn away because on a few, you know, if you can figure out the right weeks to play him, you will collect rather handsomely in a deep bench league. So I would still say Pittman and Lockett over more and uh, of course you should try to look for value. Uh, Pittman may be too much uh, underlay there and Lockett may actually end up better for you as a play, but just knowing what you get with Lockett. Okay, that is the end of my video lesson in consistency for my beta test this year. We'll see how this works. This will always be in the back of my mind so you can come back and re-listen. Use this to soup up your drafting cheat sheets and whatnot. So for Dr. Bush, I'm going to sign off and we'll be moved on to other projects here uh, really soon here. Make sure you check out us at scienceoffantasyfootball.com. 
our podcast, which is by the same name, and we have a shorter data lab podcast as well on for frequency's sake uh, website there, and we 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 uh, hit the numbers hard there. My partner in crime, Dennis, uh, has a different way to look at consistency on a weekly, but I think he and I definitely use weekly tools. His is a little different, but check his foundational articles and some of his hot or not takes are pretty intriguing. And he will make you think, and in fact, that's what he and I both want to do, is to make you think a lot here and hopefully improve your game that way. Okay, we will check you next lesson. Woo woo, lots of fun here.